that's why in war situations they get away with so much. People give up everyday rights thinking it's for the greater good and the governments have a field day with that. They love to take away rights to make themselves feel more secure because egotists that crawl to the top and stab their way to the top want power and those who crave power think everyone else must be the same as themselves so they become ultimately ruthless. Therefore the more panic they can create in order to, to protect you and justify their reason for being a tyrant, the more they will do. That's your history, that's your history in detail, in fact, that's all you have to really know. Same techniques over and over again. Well, the individual can do a lot. It's not a matter of going out and evangelizing to those you know best. You'll be looked upon as a space alien or a reptilian person or some nonsense like that because you're talking a language that doesn't come from the six o'clock news. You're giving them details and facts about things which really are foreign content to them. They haven't got it from their newspeak, the television set. If it came on the television set, then they would listen and they'd talk and converse about the subject. But if you're telling them things which are not from that six o'clock news, you must be talking from another planet. So don't evangelize to those around you unless you want to alienate them from you. And why cause trouble for yourself that way when it's, it's pointless anyway? You must seek out those who are asking questions. It doesn't mean that you'll end up on the same path necessarily by teaching them or exchanging views, but at least you can get certain topics broached and you can bounce ideas back and forth. When you're up against a system that's thousands of years old, at least thousands of years old, a science, you don't expect to knock it down in one fell swoop. You've got to take time to chip it away. And you'd be surprised how the largest object will come down when you just chip away, like a beaver. I've watched beavers go to work on trees until they have almost a pencil point of a tree trunk balancing on the other point of another pencil. That's what it looks like. And they are terrific engineers. They know how long it's going to take to finish this tree. They know where they want it to fall, what direction they want it to fall, and when to get out of the way when it starts falling. They know all of that, and they have patience. Patience. And when you watch a beaver, he does it on his own. He doesn't go around saying, gee, that's a huge tree. I better get a whole bunch of beaver here, and we can all go at it. He starts his own chipping away. He doesn't look for confirmation. Am I doing a good job? He just knows he is, because he's got patience. And this big monster of a tree will eventually fall, and it will fall exactly where you wanted it to fall. And afterwards, he doesn't look around for applause. He's done for what was, for him, a natural thing. The largest things can fall by the acts and the patience of someone who puts some life into what they're doing. When you realize there is a real war going on, very deceptive, well camouflaged, but you understand what it is, and you realize that everything else takes second or third place, then you start putting your life into something that's real and worthwhile. And just like the beaver, you don't look around for applause at the end of it. The reason there's information to be passed on is because people in past ages, few to be sure, but enough to pass on the information did so. And that's made all the difference in the world in a, a very specific way. The reason the deception is used today to control masses of people is because of the people who were awake in previous ages passing on knowledge. Otherwise, we'd all be chipped long ago or lobotomized long ago completely lobotomized. It's only been the more cautious and devious way of governments, way of getting around that, that's led them to create such a system of massive propaganda and indoctrination through television and media and schooling. It wouldn't be necessary except for people who passed on knowledge and wisdom through countless centuries. The, the people who could point to the king and say he has no clothes and break the spell that held the masses. That's what it takes. But it takes life. And when you look at what people really are doing with themselves, they're doing what's authorized to be good citizens, upstanding, upright, all those Masonic terms, all those authorized things. And yet they're not alive. They're not living. They're putting time in. They're killing time, really. And as they kill time, they're killing themselves. And there's nothing more worthwhile that brings the flame alive than getting involved 
uh, keeping your cool as you do it and passing on just enough information here and there that maybe one day will alight the fire in someone else when the words come back to them that you have uttered at the right time. That's how knowledge has been passed on. Otherwise, the whole planet would be watching sports. And thank goodness, with all the massive indoctrinations, they haven't reached that stage yet. To put so much into a few lines sometimes, you have to check yourself. Because so much can be contained in few words, words being a language. And the way you put them together must come from your own heart. When it does, and there's no show put on, no bluff, no con game at work. You reach people. Simply be sincere. But make sure that you believe in what you're saying first. And you will find that people come alive because they can't debate or argue when it truly comes from the heart. I think it was Heine who said, Oh, aus meinem großen Schmerzen mach ich die kleinen Leider, which said, from my great sorrows, I make small songs. In other words, in the depths of areas you allow yourself to go into with the emotions which are part of being human can bring out tremendous wisdom. And yet you can never condense everything you've learned into even a book about it because you personally will learn so much. You know, we, we live in a, a world where most people truly are afraid to contact people around them or simply say something they want to say for fear of breaking the silence or shattering the illusion. They want to conform. They want to give up their own personal song and conform to the authorized choir. And that's the death of not only individuals, it's the death ultimately of humanity when you're all singing in the same choir because that means someone's conducting you and someone wrote the song but not you. What a dull, dreary world that would be when there's no possible way to see variation, when there's no point visiting someone because you know what they're going to say. Why go there when you know what they're going to say? People do things through habit nowadays. They even visit each other through habit. Everything becomes habit as they put time in, just putting in time. You have a life to live and yet they're putting time in where their own creativity could be used to the full. They switch on televisions and read novels and find ways to pass the time, ways where experts will write the program for them. You don't participate watching a movie or watching anything for that matter. You're being downloaded by someone who sat down to write something and now it's been downloaded into you. Not so much because you're interested in it but because you want to pass the time. To pass away the essence that is living. When children were cooped up at one time, before they had computer games and sat and fiddled with their thumbs and fingers with a little plastic thing, they used to go outdoors and burn off their energy. Mind you, they were a bit fitter, they didn't have all the modified food, not as badly anyway, that we know of, and they didn't have as many inoculations, so they had energy to burn, but they were never bored, never bored. It's scary today to talk to a lot of youngsters the ones who do sit with their games and, and twiddle their fingers with the plastic thing and are, have their eyes fixed on something, a screen. And if they don't have that game or they've done it so many times, they'll, they'll sit there and they'll sigh. If you ask them what's wrong, they'll say, I'm bored. Here they have a life to live. When you're young, you think you'll live forever. Death is a foreign concept. It's more so today now that you don't see anyone who's dead. Everything is sanitized and taken care of somewhere else. But they have one life to live and they're bored, already bored. To go somewhere and see things or look or think for themselves is almost a foreign idea to them. They've grown up to believe that you pay for entertainment, you pay money. If you don't pay, then it cannot be valuable. So they always want money to go and visit things and see things. It would never occur to them to simply get out into the country and, and hike through a forest on their own. They're bored, boredom. Their song, if it ever was there, is now quenched already. Because the song in a person is your fire. It's, it's the driving force within yourself. It gives you the inquisitiveness. It gives you the yearning to be excited and go and look and see and do. And eventually they'll be world weary where the cares of this world will be so overwhelming as they go through the years. They'll want to switch off themselves because it's all 
so terrifying to them. Most of all, the fear-mongering in all ages is fabricated nonsense, most of it. Not all of it, but most of it. And we cannot allow that to get us down until our fire is quenched. The fact today that there are people who are still awake can verbalize what's happening, cut through all the illusions, cut through all the propaganda, the counterintelligence that's put out there to make you drift off into space, chase lizards all over the place, follow gurus who wear funny clothes but look as if they know something and look terribly pious, and those ones who I call the card sharks who give you futures from a piece of paper or a bunch of paper. People want predictions only when they're terrified of making their own life because living is a chance. Everything in life is a chance and only those who die internally do so because they won't take chances till eventually they'll be much older and they'll say it's too late for me to alter anything.